once lived on farms and in rural areas, so-called wildlands, will be relocated to cities, now referred to as human settlements. And uh, the idea is that if you concentrate populations into specific areas or zones, less energy usage, less water usage, and less transportation. So people will uh, have less reason to leave home. They'll uh, stay in their homes. They may even work out of their homes. And uh, so they're not going to be using uh, their cars. They're not going to be using energy. And uh, they're not going to be using water. Since, as we saw earlier, the UN is not big on property rights, it should come as no surprise that the first private property to be phased out will be single-family homes, what socialists at UN headquarters consider suburban sprawl. Instead, we the people will live in apartments and condos in megacities near railroad tracks. Our super-tall dwelling units will all be built to UN-specified building codes authorized by ICLEI, COGS, the ADA and a myriad of NGOs and other friends of sustainable development. While the animals run wild in continental corridors, we the humans will live in transit villages and smart cities. Smart growth or a new urbanism uh, is that ideology that says that you shouldn't have more space than you actually need. So if you're a couple of people living in a three bedroom house, well, you don't need that extra space. So why do you have it? it there's a, a clear, concerted effort to make it really just about as miserable as possible to exist and use your own private transportation, own your own home. All impetus and incentive, uh, in financial and otherwise, is to convince people that it is unsustainable uh, to live in your own home, have air conditioning, it is there duty as a human being, as a global citizen, you see, you basically exist and, and little more. Our high-rise, stack-and-pack dwelling units, complete with smart meters and smart heating systems, will make sure no one uses too much energy. And if they do, the energy police, with help from the neighbors and eye-on-the-street surveillance systems, will be right there to handle the situation. If they can put thousand people in one building it's a whole lot easier to know what they're much energy and if they do the energy police with help from the neighbors and eye on the street surveillance systems will be right there to handle the situation this is a prison planet that the UN and all the uh, you know, the globalists have been planning for a very, very long time. Like the uh, clip we're just watching, it says the terrifying United Nations Habitat One plan from 1976. Listen to this, right? So this goes back way before a lot of us were even born, right? Some of us, that is. So they've been planning this for the longest and the idea is to sell it to you as a sustainable development plan. It is a plan to save the planet. Meanwhile, it's all about total control, right? So when you hear the word smart cities, it's nothing. It's all about surveillance, right? To totally surveil, keep you on the perpetual surveillance and everything you do everything you do so they have to put you in this so-called smart cities where uh, they will monitor all of your ins and outs right they don't need you to be self-sufficient nah they don't want that like you heard in the clip we just saw that the first thing they will do is to take away People that have their homes, their you know, suburban areas, they have their uh, single homes way out there, wherever it is, right? So the idea is to get it away from you so you can be totally dependent on the government for, for the warmth of all things, right? You come to the government for food, shelter, uh, even to be able to raise your children 
the government will oversee that. I mean, they're already doing that now, right? Unless you're homeschooling your kids, you see? So it's all about total, total control where you won't be able to enjoy anything, you know, the, the simple things in life, being able to own properties, being able to have your own farm, you know, raise your own livestock, cattle, and, you know, whatever it is, right? Being able to provide for yourself. That they're looking to do away from, with that because if you're able to provide for yourself and take care of yourself and your family, then what use is the government to you? So to them, you're the ultimate rebel. They don't need guys like you. You see? So now you understand why they've been uh, they've been this war on farmers, right? All throughout Europe, all throughout you know the Western world, things like that. They've been coming against, coming up against farmers to make sure that there is no other alternative for the people out there, for the masses out there. If you're going to get anything, you will have to get it directly from the government. So this is what this whole plan is all about, to make sure they leave you with no other alternatives but to bend the knee to the globalists that run the whole show. You see, that's what this clip we're watching here is going into. Let's uh, finish this out. It's almost done. If they can done. put a thousand people in one building, it's a whole lot easier to know what they're doing, where they're going, and how they're thinking than it is if you've got a thousand people living in a rural or suburban area. And so the stack and pack is multi-story buildings, multiple families living in the same spot, walking in and out of the same door, always being able to be managed. And smart meters. You see that? He called it a stack and pack. So they'll stack you up like, a, like sardines. Humans are not designed to live in that kind of conditions, man. You know, there's a reason why the earth is as big as it is. Because you're supposed to have your own uh, space. You know, you're not supposed to hear some man and a woman going at it in your home. You're supposed to be hearing that. Like a couple are making love, you know, having their good time. And you'll be in your own home hearing all of that. You're not, you're not supposed to do that. That is not okay. You know, unless you're a pervert, you're into something like that. But that is not okay. We're not supposed to live like that, on top of each other like that, right? Somebody is fighting and you're hearing everything, you know, a dispute between a family and you hear everything. Someone is shouting and you see what I'm saying? So you need your space, but they don't want that. So they're looking to oppress you in the worst way possible. That's what this is all about, to op is oppression, right? It makes your mind go numb. It makes you go cuckoo. Because it is not in our nature to live the way the globalists, the wicked elites have designed this whole uh, world and the agenda that they have, especially with the stack and pack going into the 15-minute uh, cities where people would just be allowed to live in the smart cities. You know, they, they, they make it look like it's all about convenience, right? You'll be able to do everything is just a walk, a 15 minute walk away. Blase, blase, this and that, the other, right? But the underlying agenda is that total control and to make sure that you, you have nothing and be happy, like they said, right? Just play a big role in that management as uh, they can measure everything. Uh, that you do in your life when you're using smart appliances. If you have a garden or a single family residence, while you're watering your garden, you are maybe have more than one bathroom, you're taking too many showers, you're using more than your 10 gallons of water a day, and uh, this is unsustainable. So uh, you need to be removed from your single family residence. Anybody that's got a couple of acres of land and his own water supply and can grow his own food. These people are a threat 
to the collectivist society because they aren't going to go to the politicians and say, please feed me, please clothe me, please give me shelter. That's the secret behind Agenda 21. They want people out of the country. They want corporations out there growing all the food and that kind of thing, but they don't want anybody living out there. To describe human settlements and the food sheds that sustain them as modern-day concentration camps might be a little over the top because with no cars, parking lots, or air travel, everyone will walk and use bikes, so they will be fit and healthy, at least as healthy as the genetically modified foods they are forced to eat. Yep. So that's your prison planet that they've planned for you. And you can, you can take it for a joke all you want. But they are very serious about this whole thing, this whole agenda, because it's been, it's been around for the longest since 1976, right? And here we are in 2024. They are going, still going full steam ahead with all of this. This is Psalms, it says the second chapter and the 10th verse. It says, trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukhaha Kodash, double honors to apostles and elders of great millstone who taught us this truth and continue to teach us this truth. Peace, citation, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom to all your brothers and sisters out there that are of the household of faith from the 144,000 mighty men of the house of Israel down, down to the men, women, and children that are allotted to be delivered in these latter days who are of the elect and to the brothers that are teaching this truth in all honesty and sincerity to you, I say Shalom. Right? And I was just going through a couple of clips like I always do. I come across this one. And what really caught my eye, my attention, so to speak, is how far long they've been planning this whole thing, right? So you can imagine how they can't wait to get this whole agenda popping. That's why you had that uh, slogan with Donald Trump back in, I believe it was in 20, 2016, was it? About the Operation Warp Speed, or was it in 2020? I can't remember. You know the specific behind that but he came up with that term operation warp speed in other words you gotta you know escalate this whole thing man you know pedal to the metal <laughs> they call it right and over full steam ahead so that is the problem we have right now that is why it looks like everything is all out of whack right because they're looking to uh, accomplish this agenda of theirs and they don't have a lot of wiggle room to be playing around, right? So they, they need to bring this whole thing to pass uh, very soon. So look forward for a lot of chaos because with them, it is order out of chaos, right? So they get this thing to move and they uh, push a lot of chaos. Why do you think they are... Uh, open the borders, right, and let everybody in, even though a lot of those people are like criminals from where they came from. There's a very good reason for that. that there is a method to their madness. It is a madness, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. It's insane what they do, but there's a method to it. It is the end game to that madness. And that end game to that madness is the chaos it brings. And then here they come to give you order out of that chaos, Right? which goes back to the Hegelian dialectic, you know, the pressure from below, pressure from above, and uh, problem, reaction, solution, things of that nature, right? So they, they methodically plan this whole agenda out, right? So the scripture right here is telling you not to trust in oppression. So with this whole 15-minute city, is this smart city, is this uh, stack and pack, you know, they've been planning on for the longest, you know, it is very oppressive, like you heard the man going into it. It's all about surveillance, which brings about that total control. And, you know, there's no way the earth is as big as it is. It will all be uh, stacked up in this very small portion of the earth. All for the sake of sustainable development and uh, 
you know, trying to limit the uh, carbon emissions, you know, whatever excuse that they got, you know, they, they, they push out there for all this madness, right? Well, the main thing is the control it brings, and that control leads to oppression, right? So the scripture is telling you here not to trust oppression because you are not designed to live in this uh, hellish conditions that the wicked the least are pushing on, on us. So it says, uh, trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. But if riches increase, set not your heart upon them, right? So you should be uh, sufficient with the things you have. Don't try to be virtuous and trying to overly uh, be possessive of things, right? Because that's how you make mistakes. That's how you get entangled in the affairs of this life. You know, we have a whole lot. You're looking to, you know, get the bag, chasing the bag all of the time, right? So the scriptures are giving you a heads up on that, right? Not to put your stock in the uh, riches of this life because it is... It is not trustworthy. It is not something that is eternal. Riches of this world, the materialistic of this of this world, uh, comes and goes just like that. The way it came is the way it goes, right? You have a lot of people that have seen hundreds of millions of dollars, and now they're broke, bankrupt, things of that nature. That's what that's how this life goes, right? So the scripture is giving you warnings behind that. Well, going back to the uh, we could elite and the uh, plans that they've had for the longest. Well, the scripture talks about that. Let's get there real quick. In Psalms, the 64th chapter. Let's read into it a bit. Okay. Uh, Psalms, the 64th chapter, and the fifth verse, it says... They encourage themselves in an evil matter, right? The Agenda 21, the uh, so-called Great Reset, you know, the NWO, all these things, the smart cities, the 15-minute cities that they're looking to uh, pile everyone up in, it is nothing but an evil matter to have you take the mark of the beast, which is the uh, RFID microchip that, that will be inserted inside of you, whether it be through the... Uh, forehead or your hands right these are all evil matter and they encourage themselves they being the wicked elites of the Edomites this is how they encourage themselves in an evil matter like it says here in the scriptures they commune of laying snares privily so they come together they're tank tanks they have all these meetings they have all these agendas right while the whole aim behind that is to set a trap for you to fall in right to set a trap for you to fall into these traps part of that is the safe and effective aspect of it right the convenience aspect of it the so called for the greater good aspect of it telling you how it is uh, for the sustainable development of the environment aspect of it you see what I'm saying? So this is how they set these traps up for you. The uh, universal basic income, right? Aspect of it. Making you think it's okay for you not to do nothing. And just <laughs> Making you think it's okay for you not to do nothing and just... Uh, and just be there uh, with your hand out. Sorry about that. Right? So that's what we see. So the scripture is laying it down for you. So the communal laying snares privily, they say who shall see them. Right? Because they do it in secret. Right? They do it in the dark. So to them, it's like nobody knows what we're about. Right? They don't really know what we're about. But jokes on them because the God of the Bible, whose name is Yahweh, through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. They see you very clear, and they let the uh, the elect, the hopeful elect, know about this. They know the, they let the prophets know about this, and the prophets prophesy about all of the, all of this, right? The sixth verse it says, "They search out iniquities; they accomplish a diligent search." Right? Going back to the uh, so the whole 
small cities, this uh, stack and pack and Agenda 21, it takes them a while, gradualism, right? So they, they, they put their stock in this, right? No matter how long it takes them, like it says here, they search out iniquities, they, they accomplish a diligent search, you know? They put in, they invest time, money, resources into this, right? To make sure it comes out the way they want it to come out, you see? So you're not dealing with some shabby individuals, man, some quacks, right? These people, they know what they're doing. It might, sometimes it might look like they don't know what they're doing, but they know exactly what they're doing, right? So that's what the scripture is saying here. They accomplish a diligent search, you know, to be able to uh, constantly spread chem chemtrails in the air and tell the people, oh, it's just contrast, it's just this, it's just that. You know, the heavy metals in the food, in the air, in the water. You know, they're trying to have you thinking is okay for you. And, you know, don't worry about that. Or the processed food that they feed us, the GMOs, right? Even uh, they go as far as to tell you that the uh, lab-grown meat is just as good as the real thing. Meanwhile, there's no way it's going to be as good as the real thing. So they take time, they accomplish a diligent search in which to mess you up, man, to jack you up. You see? It says, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. So they think about these things. Their mind is constantly coming up with ways to further oppress. So it says the heart, the heart meaning the minds, their minds in which they think about these things. You know, when you see them in these meetings, they are so serious about their plans, right? You have all these talking points that each and every one of them are going into, right? On how to do this, how to achieve that, and you see? See, that's what the scripture is telling you right here. All these Davos meetings that you see, the Bilderberg group meetings, the trilateral commissions, the uh, Council of 300, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on and on, right? So that's what they do, man. They come up with all these ideas and how to oppress you, how to take everything away from you and have you feeling like it's actually a good thing for you, right? The seventh verse, it says, But the Most High shall shoot at them with an arrow, suddenly shall they be wounded. So it might look like their, their plans are going the way it should for them, which is all part of prophecy. All of these things are supposed to happen because it was prophesied to happen. It's just that it's coming, it is happening in in an evil kind of way, right? You see what I'm saying? But nonetheless, it, it was supposed to happen. But guess what? These guys that have been used as tools to bring about all this evilish, devilish plans to pass they will be judged for that. You see, that's what the scripture is saying here in the, uh, the seventh verse. But the most high shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly sh shall they be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves or the see them shall flee away. So what is that going into? Well, you have this uh, whistleblowers that used to be a part of all these meetings. They used to be a part of the circle, so to speak, part of the club. But they uh, faltered in some kind of way, right? And then they came out and spilled the beans, right? They told the world about the plans and things of that nature. So this is how they make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. And in some cases, they're just so proud of themselves that they tell you what they're going to do. They don't give a you know, flying F of how you feel about it. That's how proud they are. They just tell on themselves, right? They have so many instances about that happening. You see, that's what the scripture is saying here. It says, And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of the Most High, for they shall wisely consider his doing. It says, The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. See, it takes a special kind of uh, human being to be righteous in the days and times you're living in, right? Because everything has been designed against you to, to commit iniquity. This world we're living in glorifies iniquity. It glorifies sin. 
it glorifies wickedness, right? That's why he says here, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord. Why? Because you know it was not by your own strength that you were able to do things righteously in this time because we couldn't have done it by our own strength, right? When everything, the odds are stacked up against you like this. So that's why you rejoice and be glad in the Lord that he gave you the strength to remain righteous, to, to, to have your head on a swivel, so to speak, right? And shall trust in him and all the upright and heart shall glory. So instead of trusting in oppression, you should trust in the Lord. Because you can never go wrong trusting in the Lord. As a matter of fact, the Lord will be the one to deliver you from the hand of your oppressors. All you got to do is trust in him and believe wholeheartedly that he will come through for you. And that's exactly the kind of faith we need in these times, man. Because it's about to get hectic. It's about to get hectic. If Since way back in 1976... You know, they've had all these plans going. You can imagine how close we are to all of this. Like I said earlier, you're going to have all kinds of uh, false flag events being thrown out there. Psyops, right? Chaos. A whole lot of chaos, man, out there. And a lot of people will bug out, man. And your bug out backs is not going to help, <laughs> right? A lot of people are going to bug out, man, because never in our lives have we seen this amount of chaos before, especially people living in uh, in, uh, in the States, in America, where the, the craziest you've, uh, you know, you've had is uh, online altercations, <laughs> right? And to see all hell breaking loose all around you from just being able to just chill and go to shop you know, consume, consume, then all of a sudden, it's all hell breaking loose. See, this is the time we're coming into. So you need that protection from on high. You need uh, a divine intervention to be able to keep you stable in these times, man. Because without it, we are done. We are done, man. Always keep that in mind. That you can't do this on your own cannot do this on your own. This is where you pray that you're part of the elect. You pray that the Most High, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, has mercy on you and to deliver you in these times. This is about to get real, realer than real. And with that, all praises to the Most High, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, Chahakudash, double honors to apostles and elders of Great Millstone. See you next time, Lord willing. Shalom. Shalom.